Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 103. Today's a very exciting day. Can't wait to get you guys past triage because we have some exciting news. As always, these meetings are being recorded for those people that are unable to be with us right here, right now. The bench is actually really short. Oh, and just as I say that, Jacob shows up. So Jacob gets a mention, Sean gets a mention, those guys are here. Hopefully the rest of the guys will show up as we roll. What are we doing today? We are doing uh, the Wix 3.10.3 update. There's actually a little bit of news on that, or rather, decision making. Uh, we'll do the triage pull request like we always do. We'll do the special announcement that I promised, and then we'll do your questions, comments, feedback, things like that, that you might have. Rolling on, 3.10.3 update, yada, yada, yada. 3.10.3 is basically ready to go except for the GDI+. Plus. The GDI Plus team is becoming less responsive, and my confidence that we're going to be able to get a fix that doesn't require some operating system patch, which isn't going to work for everybody anyway, because they won't all be patched and all that kind of stuff, is diminishing. And in some conversations, we've come up with a potential alternative solution that we can implement solely in burn that may work out okay. So uh, I don't want to go into details of that since we need to go plug out on it a little bit, but we'll update the WIP if this is what we do, and this will be, what, the sixth thing that we do in all of the things we do to work around this bug. Um, so we'll do that, um, and hopefully we'll get 3.10.3 out uh, by the next meeting. It's kind of my, my uh, line in the sand kind of thing here. Um, so we're going to make progress without Windows. Um, basically, the way we've done this whole fix is without Windows. Yay. Anyway, if you can't tell, we're kind of ready to be done with this, more than ready to be done with this, it's particularly because we have a couple of fixes that we need to get out, our first three, our other two, rather. So let's go do that. So we will be doing this more soon now. Triage. Bob, ready? Uh, I am ready. All right. So we're up to 15 issues. Uh, which is, I'm hoping, I don't know, it seems a little high, but whatever. A uh, lot of feature requests. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what it was. So, this it has yeah, no label. I, I, I removed the label so, so that it would show back up triage. because we haven't been doing the retriage trick. Yes, okay. Oh, all right. Was this marked with triage? No, all right. So... Um, all right, so right, I saw this, this person complaining that every bug fixes a behavior change. Um, at this point in 3.11, that may end up being more true than not true. Um, yeah. It's going to be hard for us to, to, not, to, to not solve that. So uh, image, place this. So the problem, yeah, so the issue here is that we want to add another pixel to the progress bar so that we can have a right side, which it was supposed to anyway. And they're saying if we just look at the four pixels across, then it would work. Um, if the pixels, um, the image is only two pixels wide. The problem with the, if the image is only two pixels wide is that you can actually specify a source X and Y and you can basically build a sprite sheet of images. Um, and so we wouldn't be able to know where the dimensions are of the to end the image on the right. Place image elements next to the progress bar to give the illusion of a border. <laughs> That's true. But they could do that now. Where you could redraw all elements after on top of the progress bar when redrawing the progress so it doesn't jump to the foreground when redrawn. Yeah, I, I, there's there's no decent control over Z order. I don't think you can you can count on you know being able to to paint that way because the the board, the the rect of the control has to account for the for the yeah, extra right. border. This just isn't a big enough deal. We're going to put it in four. I don't want to spend that much time in three on something this relatively small. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think about the two pixel problem. 
Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, we should go fix it in four. And honestly, it's going to get fixed in four if someone goes does it. So if this guy doesn't do it there, it's not going to get fixed there either. So, um, yeah, I don't know anyone using that functionality. Yeah, so it's like... Obviously, because it's broken. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, yes, we should fix it. Let's go fix it in four, and if it becomes clear from four of an easy way to port it back to three, we could consider doing that. But until then, we're going to put this in four. I'm going to spend a lot of time on it. Works for me. Allow download URL on attached container. Hmm. Ship for so this basically says allowing a download URL for something that's also inside a container. Um, what does that mean? That means that if you can't... We're going to have some interesting fallback then, won't we? Where you have to... How would you fall back? I'm not sure that, or I'm not sure Burns going to do all the work to say, oh, this is supposed to be in a container. Oh, you want to switch to a download URL? Will it do that? Hmm. I mean, I could kind of see it being nice of the ability to go get payloads from the attack. I mean, just as like another fallback, especially for attached containers. Um, but I don't know that's going to work. Like. Given how complicated that you know code is, where it's like reset this, no, try again with this way, try again this way, I, I expect this isn't as trivial as one might hope in the engine. Um, I'm not against having the ability to have payloads come straight out of you know downloads versus a container. Oh. Uh. That's a good okay. Yeah, actually I've I've run into the same problem, right? Because you have a download URL, you cannot put it in an attached container. Uh th this this is this kind of comes back to the uh the issue we've discussed off and on for uh, a couple of years um about how currently we specify a lot of stuff in the authoring that requires the use of, you know, preprocessor and other tricks to create different layouts. Mm -hmm. Like today, you know, you could you, you could have a DVD bundle with loose payloads. You could have a, a, a compressed bundle, all in one, and you could have a web download bundle. And you can pretty much make all that work with, with you know, preprocessor tricks, but in a way it's kind of like, it would be really cool if you could specify it like as a link time option, you know, compile your bundle once, link it three different times to get three different layouts. And this, the problem that Sean's pointing out is an annoying one. Because download URLs exist, you cannot create a compressed bundle. So that complicates the, uh, the that idea of, you know, easily being able to rebuild your bundle in whatever media Slash layout format you want. If it was in, Jake was asking if it was embedded in the container, it had to be cached. No, not necessarily. Uh, the attached container is not kept around, and if you chose not to cache a particular thing initially and then later on ask for it, you have to turn around and go get the whole attached container again and get the bundle and so on and so forth. And I think what Bob's hinting at is more of the, we. what if we just didn't have this restriction? It's like, look, you can say this is in a container, it can be loose, or it can be on the Internet, and we'll just go get it wherever the BA says to go get it from instead of having these somewhat arbitrary restrictions. And I think they're restrictions because of the way the burn code is laid out, not because they're necessarily good ideas. Um, so I think I'm, I'm for taking this and I, I think it would be cool if we took it in four and we actually could solve this problem where everything, you basically write everything with a download URL and then you specify where you want to put the uh, shipping. Like, does it exist with the bundle? Does it exist next to the bundle, relative to the bundle? Or does it exist inside a container inside the bundle? And that, that like Bob is saying, is that's kind of just like a last minute decision. Like, ah, I'm going to do it this way instead of having all these other decisions made for you. For example, if you decide to put an attached container, you can no longer have the ability to download from the Internet, although there's no reason not to. But I think this is a four thing, so I think it's going to break a lot more than, or not, I think it's going to be a lot harder than you might think to fix that code. 
Although this, you know, this might just be one more of those things that we throw on the whole, the burn acquisition code's not good enough. Let's make it better. It falls into that bucket. So I, it's basically, let's reapproach the acquisition code in burn and have it be able to do this and other things and then loosen up the restrictions. Do we have a tag for that? I'm almost wondering if we should label some of these things uh, with that, given that they're getting so many of them. I don't I guess we have to commit to doing it in four um, or some point in the future. So, um, so yeah, I think we could take this in four. I think it, it makes sense. I do think it plays into the larger, please lay out my bundle however I choose to without so many restrictions. Cool? Works for me. All right. Sean, you're here. Cool? And we have lots of control, lots of flexibility. VS 2013 and preprocessor variables. Mm, property group, define constants. Oh, white space. It's just, what do we do? The post build event doesn't expand product root variable. That's not, that's an MS build behavior. Oh well, this is a preprocessor variable, and this is an MS build variable, and they're not the same thing. This is this is someone's confused as to how MS build and Wix fit together. They want this to work. They need to define a property called root productor, set it to this value, and then pass that value to this root productor in, into Wix. That you have to marshal. Yeah. You essentially have to marshal your properties to Wix through the define constants. You do not get yeah, I, a MS build property for a define constant. This turns into, I think, a request um, for Votive to be able to set MS build properties in the project. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, sure. Um, okay. I mean, I think it's fine if we say no because I don't think C sharp. I don't know any projects. Yeah, I don't know any project yeah. that. So yeah, no, I think you're gonna have to. Yeah. Besides, these, this post build event, this is not pre build event. This is not the best way to do this anyway, as Phil would tell no. you. Use the heat target and all such. So yeah, no, this is. They're confused on how MS build and Wix works. So that's it's not our bug at least. At least not in the way things work. And yeah, I'm not sure about changing Votive to do crazy things like that. A feature request to do math within dialog controls. Less likely we would do math here than we would in Themutal, but I don't know, it's fine. We can toss it in there. We can toss it in four. Someone want to do the work to do math in the compiler? I think it'd be more interesting if we did the negative stuff that you get with Themutal. No, this is actually Wix code. He actually wants it for W for basic MSI UI. So, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Toss it. we could toss it in four things like that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. It's like yeah, whatever. Toss it in four. If someone wants to go do the work to implement this, it'd be interesting. Probably also want it Cmutal, especially if they did math. Um, although that's not going to get math. That would be math at runtime for Cmutal. Theme, yeah, yeah, theme, I mean, that's not, that's not, that's not good. We, no. We're going to get to a place where we really need to compile theme, you know. Yeah. yeah. Or actually, we'll probably pass that. All right. MSI control with type hyperlink doesn't support transparent and no prefix. Is this our bug? Or is that... Really um, there, there, yeah. So it's documented to accept transparent. Okay. Um, it is not documented to support no prefix, although the underlying control actually does. Um, okay. I'm not sure what to do about that one. But we need to fix it so it's whatever MSI supports, we support. Well, yeah. It, I, I suspect that MSI actually does support no prefix. It's just not documented. Yeah, that's fine. So that's an easier fix than, <laughs> hey, no code. But yeah. So, um, 
yeah, that's fine. We can toss it in four if we want to fix it. In the future, someone could fix it. Future feature request. Uh, holy cow, a book. Feature request. I would like to. I would like ice validation to leave the MSI around. Now that's tricky. If we leave the MSI behind, then your next build won't build again. You'll be up to date. Um, mm. It's basically are ice errors errors, or are they just warnings and we spit out the MSI anyway? Well, ice warnings, we spit out the MSI and keep yes. it around. Right, because um, that's what warnings are with ice is even. Yeah, um, but ice errors actually, you know, they count as a build failure. Yes. We shouldn't keep the MSI around, but it is kind of inconvenient to lose the MSI. Um, uh, where do we where do we run the MSI? Or where do we put the MSI before we you know, merge in the, the cubes? I'm pretty sure it's in temp still. Hmm. So I guess if you use no tidy, you can still go get the MSIs out of temp. Maybe. Uh oh. Maybe. Oh. Actually, why? Yeah, does that not already work? Yeah, maybe. Um, in Wix four, if I remember correctly, we're now creating the MSI in the OBJ folder, um, like we should be, and then we're promoting it to the bin folder, um, usually through a hard link. Um, so I'm wondering if we can just go, yeah, we'll leave the OBJ folder behind, but not the final bin placement. Right, because I don't want to leave it by default with ice errors because someone could accidentally ship it. Right, that's definitely not the right behavior. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. This, is, this falls under no tidy, I think. Um, um, I, I think we should we could solve this in four by using the OBJ folder. We could leave the MSI in the OBJ folder and not in the bin folder if you fail validation. That's probably the way to do it. That works. So, yeah, we can put that in four. Um, improve syntax analysis. What is this? Oh, the string starting with the prefix, yada, 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 found, then do that. So, yeah, that's interesting. That means you're now, we're going to err on things that look like look prefixes or pre or preprocessor variables, but aren't. Mm, that means you'd have to start escaping the loc variables. if for some reason you actually wanted the value of the loc value variable. Because hmm. you can't just well, wait, error why, on it. Cause why, why isn't that an error? Bang paren loc dot something without the closing paren? It, it's not considered a loc variable at that point. It's considered your text. Oh, so it's only if it matches a proper Loc variable. Reference. Get it. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> so, I mean, I, I can see, you could say in four we could take it, and the chances that someone actually wants something that looks like a broken loc variable are really low. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But I think you'd need an escape then, you know, bang, bang, loc to avoid the problem. This is definitely a four thing, because we have to do change yeah. numbers to fit it. Um but I'm not against it for, we'll just have to think about all the repercussions of what it means to allow such a thing or to become more strict on it. So. Yeah, all right, we'll put it in four. All There's right. a way of doing it, someone wants to get into there. Preprocessor conditionals executed before command line variables created. What? Locate to 
recognize variable defined on the command line. If end def that, do the ah. Uh, yeah. So this this is not the the title is wrong. Um, I don't know if it's supposed to work, but it does work if you drop the you know dollar per n var dot prefix. Yeah, so our, the preprocessor is screwy in it, or inconsistent in its choices of when you have to do the dollar var and when you don't. Yeah. And yeah. in this case, it's basically it's got the wrong syntax, which I can I have the same problems where I use a stupid thing. I'm like, oh, which yeah. one is yeah. it here? Um, I'm pretty sure that this means dereference it, which means it's going and saying, go give me the value of this or something, and do an if and def on that. It's probably what it's doing. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I wasn't. I, I followed it a little bit, um, and and wasn't sure. It looked like it it should have worked. Um, right. So but, basically, this is your authoring is wrong. This works the way you because I know this. This has to work because these get set into the the, uh, the directionary before the compiler ever runs. Yeah. So yep. it definitely works. All right. Uh, so yeah, probably an incorrect. Do we syntax. do we want to call it call it a bug that var doesn't work? We could op I I think we could open a bug in four that says reevaluate the preprocessor syntax all up. Right. Because I think it needs an yeah. overhaul. I wouldn't just do one or you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, overhaul that's the whole that's thing. Fair. Which is a whip that I have not written, that I've come close to a couple times. Like, because I'm debating getting rid of the var and things like that, so it'll look more like MS build, which I think will be a good thing. Could be a bad uh -huh. thing. But there's a whole lot of stuff we did with namespacing, things like that, that's just not necessary in reality. Yeah, actually, is there anything left that uses dollar uh, other than var dot? var dot env dot and sys dot. Okay. But we could follow the same rules that MS build does, and I think people would generally be happy and be like, yeah. yeah. So if you define a variable, it overrides the environment. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have a variable, it looks in the environment. And system, we just declare those, and you can't name things that. Done. And ours are all caps and stuff like that anyway, which means nobody's ever going to pick them. Yeah. Everybody uses mixed case in the world. All right. Please add a service start parameter argument attribute to the service install tag. Currently, the argument attribute rolls up the executable uh, and all that. Can we? No. I thought we support everything MSI supports. We do. Right. Okay. So this is either you know this is either a feature request for a service no. install custom action. Right, but we're not going to add a service install tag, so we can yeah. close this and go. Say if you want to go design a whole custom action for installing services, that's something we've considered, but that's not what this is. So yes, Windows Star doesn't support that, as well it doesn't a number of things. Wix 3x can be arrow snapped and maximized, but not resized. That's pretty <laughs> yeah. funny. Yeah, I said, no, not, it's not resizable, but mm, you can crazy WPF thing that can't be undone. Well, you can undo it by using the windows and arrow keys, but you'd have to know that. Well, you can't undo it. Um, the most you can do is, you know, you can reduce it to the size of half of your monitor. But there's no way to, like, you know, tell it to resize back to what it was. Oh, I see. <laughs> and, and then it can't, and then it won't drag, so. <laughs> uh, it's screwy. Uh, yeah, we need to... It needs a re our Wix installer needs a refresh anyway, but yeah, amongst all the other things. So um, I guess we could toss us in the bug of yeah, we should redesign the Wix installer. Probably for Wix four, right? I mean, just go yeah, Wix three. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. New it version, is. right? I mean, yeah, new version, new major version. It'd be cool if we did that. MS Build fails in VS twenty fifteen, but works in twenty thirteen. Oh, really? Okay. Running the exact same command fails. Running for the developer command prompt works. Cannot find a f the file ext with type source. Their command line parsing's off somewhere here. Uh, yeah, sh uh, Sean pointed out there was a oh. funky looking hash. hash. Cool. Yeah. Good. Not a bug. Yeah. Wix. 
documentation formatting. All right, so I did figure out the root of the formatting problems on um, our uh, site. Essentially, uh, Common Mark has, for in documented way, declared that if you're going to have inline HTML, you cannot have blank lines between the HTML. Um, otherwise, it will start parsing the stuff in between blank lines as pre markup, which is why our tables oh. are having stuff broken. So you have like you know TD or TR stuff blank line TR blank line, which makes it a little more human readable in our gigantic huge tables that we have. Right. Um, but those blank lines are saying, oh, cool, let me evaluate that as pre-code because it gets indented by four spaces or whatever. Yeah. So this is just one more page that needs to be fixed along all of those. So, um, that's the fix. So yeah, we can go toss that with all the other doc bugs that need to get fixed. It's, fortunately, it should be very straightforward. Burn payloads can have names that allow escaping the cache. Yes. So, yeah, so this... The name allows you, which I, I don't know how we missed this. This should never have been allowed. Allows you to take the package and move it up and around and outside of the package cache. Um, and then all kinds of screwy things are going to happen. And you're not going to be secure. And all kinds of things. So it's like, uh, this is bad. I don't know how we allowed that. I thought the binder would catch it or something would catch it. but Now, there's a check in the... Well, there, sorry, there's no check in the compiler. There's an explicit check to allow relative paths so that you can add subdirectories. Um, but it doesn't exclude the, the directory, the dot dot directories. No, we, I don't, I don't, no, for the name, if you're going to specify the name, Sean, I think it's just, just specify yeah, search, the name. Search file is fine. Yeah, That's source file can have all kinds of relative paths. You know, it's the name. If you explicitly say where the MSI should go relative to the bundle, that should not have relative paths in it. Or uh, navigation, navigatable? I don't know, wherever they are. Yeah. Because clearly, they're all relative to the bundle, wherever the bundle is. But I really and it's fine to it. add directories. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Just no dot dot stuff in it. Um, that was my conclusion. Yeah, I think that's... I actually saw somebody doing this. It's like, no, that's not going to work. Hey! <laughs> we just saw this the other day, too. Um, yes. 64-bit works. It's only on 32-bit. Yes, this is a known behavior of that. So, yep. Yes. Oh, that's a good point. All right, we'll go back uh, in a minute. Um, I don't. This is a known behavior of the run DLL sys system setup object info and install action, right? Uh, this is a, this is a new one. I knew about install HM section, but oh. I hadn't heard of set set up inf object install action. It's very the same fancy, thing. but it's the same thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's Whatever. It's, it's some some bit of code in the in the in the you know, driver install path inside the OS is saying, ooh, let's run one once. Um, so I'm, I mean, I'm thinking, them, yeah. you know, we, we, we really should look at whether we can detect this in burn. Um, otherwise, a BA can, can, you know, a BA can prevent it. BA can say, oh, look, I'm already running, and I've been invoked a second time from run once, you know. Nah, let's just skip that. Of course, it does prevent all of the benefits you get from that, like force reboot handling and all that kind of force restart handling and such like that. Sorry, no, 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 no. Sorry, I'm not saying we we jump run once. I'm saying, I'm saying that either burn or BA can say, look, I'm already running and I'm being invoked again. Right. It's just that yeah. doesn't prevent. I mean, it, well, sorry, it does. It does break the the, the benefits of run once. Right, because we've been executed. It, we've been executed, and therefore our run once value went away. Yeah. But we can't prevent that. That's the OS is doing that. We're not going to win that fight. Um, so the best we can do is, you know, at least prevent the second instance from coming up. I 
I don't think Byrne can do that. Why not? It would block any scenario where you wanted to run two burns at the same time. The same bundle twice. Mm. And we'd get into some UI things. Like, hey, show UI, tell the user I'm not starting again. Why would we show UI? Just silently exit. They specify different yeah, command line th options to the two different things. I, don't, I mean, it's there's all these things that suddenly we've taken over their huge their whole world. Well, I mean, we're only doing this in the case when I mean, uh, the exact same bundle gets launched twice. It's the exact so same like, bundle. Yeah. One is running, you know, fresh. The other is running, you know, quote unquote from ARP, which is how it shows up in. Oh, we can tell that. In the resume. Yeah. Right. We could tell. I, I've worked around this in, inside of BA, right? Yeah, so right. this is we can. You know, we can now it's not perfect. Um and definitely we would want to we'd have to yeah, I agree. We'd have to take steps to say, Oh, you know, yeah, this is the same bundle. But all right, so that's a, all right, so let's put that in four. Let's tell this guy that he can solve it in his BA because this is a Windows behavior. And at right. some point, do we care? It's gonna be thirty two bit OSs or got no. I don't know when thirty two bit OSs are. <laughs> <sighs> It'll still be a little while, I guess. Probably. We should just start shipping a 64-bit only burn. That would solve this problem. Oh, that's a great workaround. <laughs> Except for the whole needing to run in 32-bit windows. But ah, other than that, it's perfect. Different bug. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, not good. All right. All right, so we can look at trying to do something better for them in in 4 automatically. Still not convinced, yeah. but maybe. All conditions evaluated when executing a bundled layout. It's true. It probably is. We'd have to do something to prevent it. Dude, it says delete the stuff that's not related to your... just want to close this out of principle. Fill out the section and delete the others. They don't even read it. Um... Well, they read it, but then they stopped. I'm not sure. Anyway. Evaluated when executing bundle with layout. It's true, it is. Oh. It is possible to work around this by including Wix Bundle Action 2 in your ball condition. Hmm. Good, there's a workaround. Um, yeah, I could kind of see this. You want to put it in four? You can put it in four. See if someone wants to pick yeah. it up. Yeah, I think it's fine. Cool. We're done with triage, right? Looks like it. All right. Pull request review. Let's go over the pull request review. And this is the point at which we get to talk about um, the thing that Sean brought up before, which I did not forget, Sean. I know you thought I forgot, but I did not forget. It was just I want to talk about it here because there are two pull requests for this. This is a pull request that Bob sent, and I don't always pick Bob's things, it's just he sent the ones that are more interesting to discuss than some of the ones that are still sitting out there waiting for assignment agreements or whatever. Oh, it's the topic for uh, two weeks from now? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have that topic two weeks from now. Next meeting we will talk about assignment agreements. Anyway. Oh, and I just lost my mouse cursor. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh man, I got so far with it, I was getting careless. How do I navigate in here to files changed? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, it's blind click. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is painful. Um, so this is going in and updating the 
the documentation to say, hey, you can't have names using that uh, with dot dots in them and things like that. Use is not allowed. And then there's this allow relative thing in here, which was confusing me. Allow relative. This is the yeah. You know, this is a general function for checking whether an attribute is a valid file name, and that's the existing uh, parameter to say. Oh, is it used somewhere down below then? No. No, but so sorry the the if block that this else belongs to starts out with saying if it's not valid, including whether it's relative, then if it is relative, if relative is allowed, then... Oh, I see. Allow relative is passed into a long file name. Right. Yeah, yeah. I see. So we're adding a, a error message then. Yeah, my else if is to say, wait, it is valid, and we're allowing relatives, so now I can check whether the it has dot paths are. Yeah. So this is farther reaching then. So this will affect more things. Um, Anything theoretically, it would. Except the it's only, only instances I could find of the allow relative true are for parsing right. bundle stuff, which makes sense because there is very yeah. little. Very little relative exactly. paths in, in yeah. SI. I considered putting the check in there, but there were there were two places that did it. So I'm like, well, wow. all right. The problem is, I don't like the. Yes, that would block that scenario, Jacob, where you had dot dot in the middle of your name, which I think is fine, I, I, more than fine. Um, however, it brings up Sean's previous point of the, that would prevent people that are currently doing that. So maybe this is something we take in four and not in three. Well, so the reason I block the dot dot in the middle is because you could go foo, whack, dot dot whack dot dot whack dot dot absolutely whack, absolutely bar. absolutely uh, you must you must uh, i you must do that yeah um i do agree i mean you know if we wanted to take a a less risky fix in 3 and save the biggest one for 4 then we could just you know whack the the conditional there just do the check for the leading dot dot cuz that's probably where most people are going to get you know confused And I just don't think. I don't know what to do about three. I'm also fine if we don't take it. I mean, you know, it, it, I think it's a fine change in four. Um, it's certainly our intent in four, and I don't really want to be dealing with the crazy. Like, the fact that Burn supports us now is like, oh, cool, we'll just resolve the path for you. But, like, I don't. It'd be better if we didn't do that. All right, so so thoughts on taking this in three? Yes or no, people that are here? I'm plus zero. Plus zero, awesome. No, right. I think I'm minus zero. Sounds like Sean's minus one there. So, so Sean wins, apparently. Yeah, all right. We'll take it at four. We'll punt the three. Um, the uh, the the bug refers to four two six five, which this is not four two six five. Uh, does not fix four two six five. Did I make a typo? Yeah, must have. Because four two six five is about some doc bug. <laughs> Maybe it fixes it. You never know. Uh, no, <laughs> I looked. <laughs> I'm really good. You never know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. All right. So I think we'll take this change because this is the one that's in four, and we will not take the three change just because it's breaking change and it's not worth it. Works for me. All right. <laughs>
did I get all your concerns covered there, Sean? Because I know I didn't go back when you brought them up. All right. He's still typing, though. We get a nice yes, and then, but... <laughs> A bit overzealous. Yeah, I I hear you, but I really don't want burn dealing with dot dots in the middle. I just don't think it's something we should yeah. be encouraging in burn behavior anyway. Not not in the name. I think in, the name. in source file it's fine because no, you have to have it source you know, file. build time. All right, cool. So the special announcement that I promised everybody. We have a new committer to Wix, and this is not just a contributor. Contributor, this is a committer. This is someone that has you know keys to the kingdom kind of thing. So it's not going to be any surprise to you. I want to everybody give a round of applause to Sean as a new contributor to a committer to the Wix tool set. I know you can hear me clapping. Yeah, you can hear me. Clapping. I need to get more people on here with things. So um, I'm firmly believe in the the uh, the promoting people after they're already doing the job already, which sounds completely unfair, but it does ensure that they are uh, going to be successful at the new world. And Sean has been doing, you know, cherry picking across branches, going back and finding bugs that aren't even necessarily his and fixing them, uh, keeping up on all of his features uh, that he's done and taken over large chunks of burn um, and things like that. So it it's, took a while. We've been thinking about it for a bit and Bob and I, which is basically the way it works, all the existing committers say, should this person be in? And it was pretty unanimous that Sean should definitely be a committer. So um, that's awesome. The other thing that's really awesome about this is that this is the first person that's had commit rights to Wix that hasn't worked at Microsoft ever. Everybody else I've met in person and have worked with them directly uh, on the Wix tool set for an extended period of time. So uh, Sean has uh, accomplished what has previously up to this point been impossible and become a committer <laughs> with zero ties to Microsoft at any point in time. So I think that uh, as well <laughs> is is a huge testament to his, uh, his fortitude and great work that he's done with the Wix tool set uh, thus far. So I really appreciate all the work that Sean has done and so you'll see him as a committer which means you will see Sean taking care of pull requests and saying things and when Sean says things, they're probably going to stick. Um, he should be less, I, I expect over time, Sean will be less of the, well, I think, and it will turn into, well, we should definitely do it this way, um, which is kind of where we're going to go. So this is a very exciting day. Um, I'm going to have a blog post either today or tomorrow about it so that we can tell the rest of the world. But you guys here, I want to tell first those that you show up. So again, at this point, Sean should be blessing or at least smiling very big in his um, office, wherever he might be at this point in time. So with that, any other questions, comments, uh, things going on? We're doing pretty well. We're staying within the hour, which is awesome. It's kind of what I'd hoped we would do. I think it's more efficient to do one hour meeting than a bunch of 35, 40 minute meetings or two 35, 40 minute meetings. Um, on to the next meeting. Talk to you later. All right, Jacob, you have a good one. We'll see you in next week, or two weeks, in two weeks. In two weeks, we'll have more announcements. In two weeks, we'll have uh, more things going on, and we will be moving forward to, uh, I don't know, we'll hopefully fix this to 3103 is my other dream, that we will have that sorted out by then. Um, we'll see if it all comes together. Gary's asking, how can I get permission to fork? Uh, go to GitHub and push the uh, create a fork button. So it's a GitHub feature. Just sign in and push that, and then you'll get your own version that you can then send pull requests from um, for uh, features and bug fixes and things like that. It's not showing. Well, Go follow the GitHub documentation because you can in any you can go to any project any public project that you can see and hit the button or wherever it is. It's been so long since I've done one. I've been so stable lately in my forks that it's somewhere that you can say push this button. And I'm sure it's in the GitHub documentation. I don't have it memorized off the top of my head that says here's how you go contribute to a project. The first thing you do is create a fork of it in your own world. Create a branch. Edit inside that branch. Finish that work. Submit pull request from that branch to the main project saying, hey, here's the work that we would love to see. Those kinds of things. 
Ah, and Bob found it for you. All right, cool. So, things, other things, stuff going on. We've already lost Jacob. He jumped off. Um, other stuff going on. Questions, comments? Yes, no, maybe? All right. There you go. Cool. And welcome, Gary, first time guest. She'll miss most of the meeting, but that's all right. 9.30, I agree, I assume is a little bit weird for some people that get caught with their, their 9 to 10s and then their 10 to 11s. Yep, it's always going to be a little tricky, but hits the window. can always go back and catch the videos online. All right, well, given that, I think we're going to wrap this one up. This will all be up on the web on YouTube soon, and Bob will get the notes wrote, posted to Fire Giant if you want to read them instead of watch them. And uh, we'll say happy, more happy things about Sean here in the very, very near future. So again, congratulations, Sean. Thank you for all the work you've done uh, at this point. And uh, until next week, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.